All right. Today I want to talk about interesting topic. Uh, it's about the important equipment or device used for the autonomous vehicles and autonomous robots. It's LiDAR. And as the robot engineering had to know how the LiDAR work and what kind of LiDARs uh, we use for uh, autonomous robot or autonomous vehicles and what the parameter inside the uh, LiDAR design, okay, we had to understand. And after that, we know how what kind of data bond, uh, I mean the data into the LiDAR, okay. Uh, right here, I give you introduction about the LiDAR. I separate many videos, a different kind of level. So here's introduction, okay. So here you can look at the picture. We have several real LiDAR right here. The first one, the bigger one right here, uh, Valorant uh, ITL CD4. And the second one right here, 32 and 16. 16, I think, really popular for students. But anyway, it's really expensive device, okay? And you look at this uh, number right here. I hope you understand how the uh, resolution of the LiDAR and CD4 right here means the layers, laser beams, are prone to the object. The higher uh, number right here, you can see the higher, uh, the higher resolution. It means the more the laser beam prone to the object. Okay, it's, uh, you, you will get the higher resolution. It's right here, the 32 layer laser, and right here sitting la uh, laser li layers. Okay, laser layer. Okay, so. So LiDAR is a sensor, right? It's a light detection and ranging. So it sends out the beams of the light and measure how long it takes for the beam of the light to come back, right? So it's, it's determined the distance of the object, okay? So LiDAR contain laser, right? And basically scan la scanning laser beam across the few of view and the photo diodes or photo detector that detect the incom incoming the photons that are reflected from the object, right? Uh, the laser lasers will send out very short pulse and few nanoseconds then measure the time it takes for pulse to go to the object and back to the lighter where it's detected, right? From there, from that time, we can calculate the distance of the object, okay? Uh, scan the field of view means we get for each point in the field, and they tell the distance to the object, and so what the object there are, and how far away they are, okay? Here is uh, basically the construct of the later lighter, uh, validize, we have the laser, our emitter and laser receiver housing of big one and you can rotation right here the time got frequency is about 5 to 15 hertz if you know about the look at um, the another sensor like when a student you know about the ultrasonic sensor the principle is quite the same you can send the pro and get it back and you calculate the time and rely on the time uh, back and forth you can calculate the distance easily so this is some information right here the uh, validize CD4 you can see for laser for detectors okay it's rotation to 360 degree okay and this angle I will show you the coordinates into the lighter in the in the next picture in the next slide and the frequency right here you can just spin the lighter about 5 to 15 hertz and the range of 50 uh, meter range for the pavement or 120 meter range for the car okay so lidar sends sense and give a really high solution data data by sending out a thousand of laser signal right you understand that and the laser will power up the objects return to the sensor where we can determine how far away objects are uh, by timing how long it takes for the signal to return. I mean, you send the signal, you get it back to the lay layer device and you know what time, how long they take. And so we can tell a little bit about more the object hit to 
this by the measuring the intensity of the return signal i mean we know how the strain of the signal uh to the object and get it back and from that you know the property of the object you point to the laser point to so this laser array is in the infrared spectrum so it's sent out many different angles are uh, usually in the 360 degree range so and lidar sensor give us very accurate the models uh, for the world around used in the tree but you know very expensive sixty thousand dollar for standard units that's the reason as a student we don't have so much train for practice on the uh, this lidar so uh anyway in this video next video we have some simulation for you to practice in the c++ code you can run the lidar you can change the parameter uh you can change the layers laser beam and red resolution of the um of the lidar and and get the visualization of the visualization of the lidar okay it's really good for practice for play with the data points in the light later okay in simple black code mm, so lidar sends thousands of laser rays remember that at different angle so laser gets emitted reflash of the obstacle and then detect it using the receiver sending and receiver okay based on the time difference between the laser emitted and receiver the distance is calculated a laser intensity is value and so received and can be used to evaluate material property of the object and the laser reflect up okay i mean intensity right here um when you look at the 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 tree of the lidar you can see the difference the color they show you a different color on the tree is bay and from that color you can know the how strength of a signal uh, laser send to the object and go back from that you can know um, the property of the object you the laser point to uh, and for the autonomous vehicle you can see right here they how they mounting the laser on the car uh, the green block right here you see the the car and they move forward as direction right here and the right here is the late uh, lidar they put right here and coordinate lidar is right here the <clears throat> as it's moving forward the forward direction of the car and the y is right here okay look right here top down view and this side view if you look at right here you can see the z z's okay uh point it up and uh, why if you look at right here i told you look at it right here you can see uh, s right here and y and the more important thing right here you have to know the laser beam angle right here you can see here is let imagine this picture it takes me a little bit time to to, to know about this uh 26.8 degree right here the ranging of the laser okay when uh, and right here it depends how much the layer right here they can separate a lot layer right here depend on the light lighter what kind of lighter the most layer right here is point to the object right here it show you the resolution of the lighter okay and right here's the i think is the horizontal okay angle right here vertical range angle right here huh and that's the coordinate system for the lidar you have to understand a little bit about this and how the angle right here and next time we will learning in the course how to change this parameter and how to see the intensity of the uh, laser beam uh, of the lidar so when we both say the lidar so how the lidar data is stored a lidar data is stored in in the format called the point cloud point cloud data so bcd right when you get this uh the the this the data data from the lidar you can got the bcd file and they list a lot of the uh, the the, uh, the position okay of the object the laser beam point to the xyz in the cartesian coordinates along with the intensity value i i tell you not only the position but also the intensity value i so it is signal snapshot of the environment so 
after a single scan, right? For example, uh, Validar VLP CD4 lighters. See, so how many total points every, I mean, every uh, update? Okay, uh, about 256,000 points S, Y, Z, and I by every update. Okay, so Point Cloud is set all the lighters reflection. Okay. It set all the LiDAR reflection, that's its measure, okay? Its point is one laser beam going to the object and being reflected. And that's create a point, okay? The lasers send it out, point to the object, and you get the point right there, right? The location there, and not only that, from the strain of the signal of the laser, you can see the property, the intensity of value there. So and thus, so you collect all the reflection of those laser beams. So from environment, is create a point cloud. So if you have the city for laser, obviously generate way more than more data than if you have only about two layers, ten layers, depend on lighter itself, right? Or uh, roughly about one hundred megabyte per second more or less, okay? So, uh, LiDAR CD4, VLB CD4 to generate about 256,000, 256,000 points every updates, okay? So, that's a summary about the LiDAR. So, all the codes right here in the LiDAR, uh, you can figure out on the uh, PLC library. Uh, PLC library is the popular environment uh, library right now uh, for you practice in the C++ code. And PL, BCL, BCL right here is open source, C++ library, and they work working with the point clouds. So you can use to visualize data and render shape, become the familiar right now and become familiar with some the uh, peering process function inside. Right here, is a, you can go to this website and figure out how to download, install in the uh, Linux system or window, but I recommend you use the Linux system in this case and running the code. Okay, BCL point cloud right here is widely used right now in the robotic uh, community, right? And working with the point cloud data. And there are many tutorials on the website. Uh, and you can go there and try figure out, but the about point cloud data, so they have a lot of the type of the data there. So for example, sometimes you want to get S, Y, Z, the location, that's it. Sometimes you want to get uh, point cloud S, Y, Z, and I, they always there for you to get it, okay? Um, but anyway, you have to know uh, about about the coordinate system for the LiDAR, okay? And how the angle, the range angle, the horizontal angle, or inclines uh, right here, incline the angle from S axis to the uh, LiDAR. They I mean the incline right here, the angle right here. Um, and when you see the real LiDAR prone scan environment, you can see right here, uh, the color right here, different, the object they detect the object not only that they can see the the color why they had different color because the intensity value they show you the property of the the the, the object the laser pin point to right so BFC, uh, BCL library right now, we have the open source tool for the BCD. It, let's go to the BCD, uh, BCL, BCL library and figure out how it works. And you look at the, the document, how to use the C++ function, uh, building into the library, okay? And we use a lot of the dash function, okay, for uh, visualize in, uh, later, okay? So, 
widely used for many tutorials and they build in the function for all the filtering, segmentation and clustering. It's really important for us to do it. And rendering for the Pons Cloud and Shape, okay? Here's the website, you remember that. And here I introduce you some type, how they mount in the ladder and some of the equipment to track in the object uh, or environment outside of the car with autonomous vehicle in a real car. Here is the Mercedes-Benz car. They mount in the two uh, serial camera this side and the another camera in the middle right here for the classified I mean, uh, the traffic signal, how to recognize the traffic signal, okay? Uh, two stereo camera they can use for something for the um, uh, measuring the uh, object obstacle or um, recognize obstacle and from that you can measure distance to for the uh, IDAS system I mean uh, and here is a radar radars we talk later in another video and radar can <clears throat> see the environment around the car and they provide the velocity of uh, speeding of the car, the object for us okay the second thing the lidar you can see how the mounting most, most people see the lidar mount on the top right the rope right here of the car but they can see uh, something around uh, on the bottom okay level so uh, that's Sometimes you have a lot of light around the car on the bottom level to see how the world around the car below. So in this car, in this practice, we 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 will uh, play with the curve, the simple blood curve, and we generate the visualization, uh, laser beam, and how it look like, um, and how it look how it look like for the. Uh, uh, simulation and how we get the data point and how we segmentation filtering later a lot of stuff we play with it so right here uh, in the code we has you had to see something has uh, some the glass the environment cpp or render sensor like right here and i hope you uh, have to know how to run the c++ code in the linux system okay But anyway, you have to install the BCL in the Linux system, the Point Cloud Library in the Linux system. And <coughs> you go to the folders, okay, uh, contain the uh, executive file, and you create uh, this step I will show you in the Linux system how you run the code, okay? And we will create the traffic right here with the uh, rows and it has several lanes and the car several car traffic car right here okay and here's the autonomous vehicle we want to focus on and some traffic around okay and then we will play with the lidar we create the lighter point laser beam right here to see how it looks like and we can change the parameters in the layer. How about the layer, the angle right here? We create many layer higher solution for the layer right here, and we can get more the angle horizontal angle right here. I mean, we create higher resolution for the layer. I mean, okay. Not only that, uh, in the uh, the first code right here, we see something appear many times in the course is a template. Right now template so in, very popular for uh, for C++ blah, blah. and I hope you know how to use template function. If you don't know you can go to the link I share right here uh, and click and figure out how to template. Template means you can reuse the course with many different type of variable. Okay? Uh, in the right here we uh, we use the library PCL point cloud library. Uh, Sometimes we got the variable we want to got a variable uh, S Y Z. Okay, we don't need the intensify. So, but sometimes the same code we want to get the variable S Y Z I. So we cannot write two function. Okay, it's way up time. Okay, we just want to write one function. Okay, and we just change the variable inside and we review review the code. Okay. That's a, uh, the, the benefit of templates. So 
the LiDAR can function use our uh, previous produce a uh, PCL prong cloud object with the URA here, PCL prong, the prong XYZ prong. But the objects use the template because there are too many different type prong clouds, right? And some are, some that are 3D, some that are 2Ds, and some that include color and intensity. So here uh, we're working with the 3D prong clouds so point XYZ is you, but later we can use uh, uh, point cloud with the intensity inside uh, point XYZ I. So that's the reason we need for a template. For example, one uh, one example right here you can see in the code, C++ code. I will upload the code and you can download and play with it. But I hope you understand right here because we you see a lot of the template function right here in the code. Even in class, in class we create a class, and inside class we create a template function because we can reuse the code with different type of the point clouds. Okay. For example, right here uh, we say this one. This one is mean the type of the value. Okay, this class, and inside right here you remember. We say pointies mean we can change the pointy in any kind of point cloud you want. For example, point cloud um, XYZ or XYZI or whatever you want. Another example I tell you right here. For example, you write the function uh, plus two number. You want the plus two number integer or sometimes you want plus two number float or sometimes you want uh, the function uh, uh, the function um, addition to number to uh, double a number. So you cannot write all all the function. Okay, do the same thing. Okay, you just write the one function and you say okay, uh, call template. Okay, and you put right here point t, and after that, uh, you just uh, replay the point t right here. Whatever you want, what type of you use, or integer, flower, single, whatever you use. Okay, just write one time and you receive the code. Uh, that's the benefit of template, and so so about the PCD ties the file you have BC, BCL use a template for different point clouds, okay? Point XYZ, point XYZI, or point XYZ RGB, a different type. We can not create a, a different function do the same thing, okay? With us one function and that's replay the variable right here okay the type variable right here so templates allow reusable code okay so process point clouds your template and later we can use the porn xyzi okay so in the code you will play with sometimes you train the number of the the parameter of the point clouds the the late lighters you can in Increase number layers, or you uh, decrease horizontal layer increments. Okay, uh, and set the mean distance. I mean, when you put set the distance right here, why, 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 why do we need it? Because we put the lidar on the top of the core, the rope, the core. Sometimes the lidar beam, laser beam hit to the core. The rope of the core, so we don't care about this point because the rope of the core. So we set the mean distance. We say all the points. With that distance, we don't care. We don't need to know about it. That's on uh, that's an object. Okay, that's a rub the core. And not only that, we add a noise. Noise the, you see in the real lidar, they have a lot of noise right here. With simulation, we put the noise inside to see how it look like. Right here, for example, you can change the number of layer in the code. I will show you later, but I, I just introduction you what we will do with the code and what we will get the result in the code. Okay, and as you see, we said that it's mean distance about five meters. I mean to remove the point from the vehicle rope. And right here, you can after we train the parameters in the code, we can see a really different the first time, right? A high resolution. They allow the laser beam point to the object right here, uh -huh, and give us a lot of the point cloud data, right? And from right here, you can see, see, that's one, uh, 
one laser beam point or two laser beam contact plug, we don't know property a lot of property of this object okay it's really low resolution right resolution right here but right now we can play with that higher resolution okay we do this in the code and that's the uh laser beam how we look like so but we concerned about point clouds image how the point cloud on the object they point to uh, the laser beam point to we need to see how the point cloud data uh, is shown on the uh, showing on the the image okay visualization so we right here you can see uh, this point right here is where the rope the car right here and right here you can see they get from another car right here, another car right here, you can see there's something different. Mm -hmm. Right here, you can right here this the light output right here, and you see the the laser beam that hit to the rope of the car. So you can go right here, but in the code we can skip this point. We don't care about this light uh, the data right here. And right here you can see different points. So many points to the uh, this object. Maybe this is a car on the road, or uh, this is another car right here. You can see that. And when we add noise to the uh, to the uh, code, you can see something uh, really different. It look like real the data point. Okay. Uh, that's all I introduce you how we uh, from how lidar work and so and how we play with this one in the code. Okay. It's really cool stuff for you to know the uh, lidars, uh, how the lidar play with the lidar, use the segmentation, KD3 range chart filtering, a lot of stuff I tell you later. It's hard topic, it's really difficult to call topic. So uh, I don't tell so much right here. Let's introduce you uh, in this the video, how we play in the next video. Okay, right here, the code right here you can. Da, 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 da.